hi and welcome to Hardware Heaven. You haven't seen me for quite a long time, but I haven't gone anywhere, don't worry. I'm very happy to be back. And we're going to be kickstarting my reappearance onto the Hardware Heaven internet world with a review of Puppeteer. Now, Puppeteer is a game developed by Japan Studios and published by Sony Entertainment. So we're going to take a look into the world of this awesome Japanese fairy tale platform gaming adventure. Now the world of Puppeteer is set on a stage, it's very pantomime themed and you kind of see it from the viewpoint of the audience. You even hear things like applauds and clapping, cheering, booing, just like you would in a pantomime. Unfortunately there's no, he's behind you, he's over there, but you can just imagine they're saying that or you could even just say that yourself whilst you're playing the game. Now you actually play as Kutaro, who is a wooden puppet boy who loses his head at the beginning of the game. Now don't worry, he's not a real boy unless you believe in Pinocchio, but the mechanic of the game is that whilst you're playing you collect various heads. It can be anything from a skull, a spider, a hamburger, and this is actually the main kind of mechanic of the game whilst you're playing through it on the platforming adventure. You can switch out your heads, you can have three equipped at any time, and those heads give you different abilities aiding you throughout the game. For example, at the very start of the game, you put on your skeleton head and you can see a skeleton ghost and you use that head to then activate the skeleton, he'll start dancing and release all of these moonstone crystals that you collect and by collecting those, it brings you back to life instantly. So if you die, you respawn where you are, which is a very good mechanic. And you can find these other moonstone crystals around the world. You just collect them from in pots, just like you would imagine they would be. So I really like the way that you can use that. Another example is you encounter like a a burger that you have to jump on in one of the kitchen seas. I know it's crazy, but it's awesome. And you can use your burger head to make the burger more springy so you can jump to the other side. Things like that you'll encounter, you know, use your imagination. There are tons of things that you can use with the various heads that you find throughout the world. The heads also actually work as your health system. In many games, you've seen the heart mechanic. This, the head mechanic, you can have three equipped and if you lose a head, that's you're losing one of your lives essentially, but it isn't as punishing as that. If your head gets knocked off through fighting or combat or you're just hit by something, you can run and collect your head and you'll have it back, therefore not losing a life. One of the other leading mechanics in the game is a pair of scissors. Now you actually use these magical flying scissors to cut your way through and move through the various platforms of the game. They're also your main fighter mechanic when targeting bosses and any big fight battles that you encounter during the game. Although many of the fighting scenes that you actually encounter that aren't boss battles are pretty standard and easy, but that's not the main mechanic. It's the storyline and the way the platforms move and change from scene to scene that is the real key and the real kind of spark and flair that this game has. I absolutely love that once you've finished going through a kitchen and being chased by magical forks and rolling fruit to creepy cellars where kids are locked up and you have to rescue them from the Moon Bear King, it's a really dark fairy tale that you can imagine in Japan they would tell their children to scare them to maybe use their head and think their way out of various situations. I really like the, the underlying tones throughout this and your companion, a flying cat called Yin Yang, is really witty, a lot of dry humour and is quite sarcastic at times and I think it's really really well played and the voice acting is really charming. The art style is very like Studio Ghibli. If you've ever watched any of their animated films like Spirited Away or Kiki's Delivery Service, that art style is brought to life in this game but in a more puppet way. You've got Ubaba in Spirited Away which looks exactly like the main woman character in Puppeteer and I really 
really like that that it's got that relation. Maybe they worked with Ghibli or got some inspiration from it. I can't find anything online that confirms this or denies it, but you can tell just by playing it that it is heavily influenced by this. It's something you would definitely appreciate if you liked games like Nino Kuni or are just a fan of watching the Ghibli movies in general. There is a lot of content to this game. The storyline is very, very immersive and very driven where you can just sit back and listen to what's going on. It's very audio, you hear a lot of things, the music changes, the voice acting is great. I really really enjoy the platformer aspect to it, the challenge that comes by having to jump over moving things or climbing or using your scissors to fly and cut through various obstacles. I like the mixture of mechanics that are in the game but the story can become a little dull at times and feels like it's being dragged out so don't expect something that's going to fly by without any kind of tedious or boring bits because that never really happens. If you're a fan of platformers or a fan of Ghibli, I would definitely recommend checking out this game. I'm having so much fun playing it. I've had an episode of a Let's Play up on my channel if you want to take a look at that so you can really hear the full story and decide whether you want to play it, but I would definitely recommend getting it if you enjoy platformers. Thanks so much for watching this review and we'll see you in the next video. Bye!